add more meat to the uh, Ekman calculations. We had our uh, equations that uh, looked like this for uh, a non a inviscid uh, steady uh, incompressible flow, but we are now saying the ocean basically has to consider friction because the entire motion is mostly forced by the winds other than the thermohaline circulation. So we uh, convert that uh, vector equation into these uh, component forms minus Fv plus 1 over rho F dp dx equals 1 over, one over rho uh, ref d tau x dz remember this is d tau x dz how the zonal wind stress penetrates the ocean uh, f times u plus 1 over rho ref dp dy equals 1 over rho ref d tau y dz meridional wind stress uh, forcing the ocean in its friction layer. Uh, we haven't s said yet how deep uh, the friction layer is. Can we split then this into a uh, geostrophic component and an a geostrophic component like we did before where we were so, uh, calculating sub geostrophic flow and we had taken simple form of friction and uh, we had uh, made the geostrophic flow non-divergent as usual for a incompressible fluid uh, and here we balance the uh, a geostrophic component with the wind stress okay so wind stress has obviously uh, uh, influence on the ocean through friction and it creates the pile of water uh, and or the dipping of water uh, through its friction and the wind stress curl, the rotational sense of the winds and so on and it creates a geostrophic flow down the hill as we said but it also creates an ageostrophic flow so we can make that decomposition writing u as u geostrophic plus u ageostrophic and balance the ageostrophic term with uh, the frictional term or the wind stress term and in this case uh, we can easily write the uh, integral of this equation from the bottom of the uh, Ekman layer or the friction layer to the surface where the wind stress is uh, coming in and write the integral of this equation as uh, F Z hat cross M Ekman where M Ekman is the transport going from minus delta to zero rho ref u a geostrophic uh, in the z direction and the integral of this side obviously becomes uh, tau at the surface because the bottom minus delta is where the wind stress is going to zero right very simple just integrate this equation and you end up with an estimate of the Ekman transport the wind driven transport uh, based on the given wind okay um, obviously we haven't said what Delta is and we'll see that maybe we can get away by not being very rigorous about uh, where the Delta is okay this is called the momentum penetration depth. The wind momentum is going into the ocean. So that's kind of what we want to look for. If you just cross the uh, left hand uh, side with z hat, then we know that z hat cross z hat uh, cross m e k will give us minus m Ekman. And the right side, uh, we can take the negative sign out by doing tau wind cross z hat instead of z hat cross tau wind so uh, Ekman uh, transport now just simply becomes tau wind cross z hat divided by f so whatever the delta is we can estimate the Ekman transport by simply knowing the wind stress and the Coriolis at that latitude how great is that right so the vertical structure in this case is uh, unknown okay we cannot know from there so what Ekman did was uh, in that fine evening uh, was to just sit down and figure out that uh, if the winds are blowing in this direction then the 
uh, surface will want to go in this direction but Coriolis will push it uh, to the right and it is that current in the ocean that is going to tra try to drag the layer below so the layer below is going to be again tilted to the right we are in the northern hemisphere because Walfred uh, uh, Ekman was sitting in uh, Norway so that will be to the right of the surface current so surface current is at an angle of 45 degrees in the ideal case to the winds because of Coriolis that current is dragging the surface so that's going to be uh, tilted to the right uh, of this current because of Coriolis again frictionally this current is going to drag the layer below but obviously it's going to get weaker because friction is going to make the energy disappear dissipate whatever okay so this kind of circular or spiral pattern of currents going down all the way where the very bottom you could have uh, weak currents going exactly opposite direction of the winds is called the Ekman spiral but this is not so easy to find in the ocean this is theoretically true it's not like this will twist the ships or anything like that it's just uh, something that uh, shows how the uh, wind stress actually projects into the ocean so the integrated transport integrating the current current is the speed at which each parcel is moving whereas transport is averaged volume that is moving right so Ekman transport in this case is perpendicular to the wind so wind is going in this direction and the Ekman transport in the Ekman layer would be perpendicular to the wind stress that's the main message of this um, calculation by Ekman so uh, you we have already seen the uh, anticyclonic and cyclonic circulations you can use your Coriolis now and say if there is high pressure here low pressure around uh, flow would want to go from uh, high pressure to low pressure and it would be tilted to the right so you end up with a convergent uh, flow and uh, downwelling which means lighter surface waters are being pushed down and you can see this in the uh, cut section so winds are going in and winds are coming out and you're creating a convergence and water has to go down because it cannot go out of the ocean and on the other hand you have a cyclonic circulation which is divergent so water is coming uh, to the surface from below this is typically how you would dome the surface uh, upwelling in the equator is a bit different coastal upwelling is different but this is like a open ocean Ekman uh, pumping this is called Ekman pumping this is called Ekman suction Ekman pumping Ekman suction okay in reality there is a, a scaling that goes with it that calculation uh, was done in 1969 by somebody that I won't go into so you can look that up in uh, the book okay in the lab uh, John Marshall and Alan Plum create uh, an Ekman uh, suction and Ekman pumping by having a disk and rotating at uh, a different speed than the tank uh, in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction and show that they can have converging and diverging flows so if you have a cyclonic circulation like the earth then you create a divergence uh, because it's a um, cyclonic circulation low pressure in the middle so there is our uh, Ekman transport and you can we have seen this before in fact uh, you have a converging flow you can see these arrows converging in and at the bottom you have a divergence because water is going down hitting the bottom and it has to go out okay this is the opposite rotation but in the real world we have uh, upwelling happening uh, let's say this is the Ekman layer now the dashed line upwelling happening because of Ekman divergence on the equator because of Coriolis not because of the rotational sense of the wind curl nonetheless in the subtropical gyres obviously it's the wind stress curl that's converging anticyclonic flow and 
pushing down water in the subpolar gyres, uh, the opposite sense of the wind stress curl is pulling up the water. So there is Ekman pumping here and there is Ekman suction here. Very simple concept, so go through it, uh, make sure you understand it and you should be able to simply write it starting with the uh, equations that did the uh, Coriolis term, pressure gradient term and the surface friction and split the total velocity into geostrophic and ageostrophic components and ageostrophic components balance the wind stress forcing and the geostrophic component balance the pressure gradient. Only thing to remember here is that pressure gradient itself in terms of the surface height, doming or dipping of the surface and the flow, geostrophic flow is created by the wind. Okay, that's the kind of unique thing about the ocean.